Today, we're diving into the supplement Shilijit, the ancient remedy that's been categorized as a testosterone boosting miracle. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. There are hundreds of supplements out there that claim the same thing. So I'm going to summarize the biggest studies on the supplement so we can find out if Shilijit is in fact a testosterone boosting miracle or just a glorified pile of dirt. Let's begin. All right, so step one of understanding if Shilajit has any benefits is figuring out what it is and how it works. Well, it's basically the sticky, tar-like substance that oozes out of rocks in the Himalayas. Sounds exactly like something we would all love to put in our mouth to go through our digestive system. The main component of Shilajit is something called fulvic acid, and the main mechanism of Shilajit that's able to increase testosterone is by increasing luteinizing hormone. Now, lots of young people recently are obsessed with anything that can increase testosterone, even if it's by 1%. The main reason is for muscle building, but I guess some people just like to increase testosterone as much as possible for whatever reason. Most of the research done on Shilajit is done on rats, however, so we don't have that much to go off of, unfortunately. In this video, we are going to be focusing on human studies to see if there's any benefit for taking Shilajit. Here's a study that goes over Shilajit and its effects on testosterone. It took 90 days, but Shilajit was able to increase testosterone and free testosterone. It also increases DHEs after 90 days, which helps increase testosterone levels. And this was in healthy adult men. So it's not like these people have a testosterone deficiency and we corrected it or something like that. These people were able to raise their testosterone even when it was considered normal under the normal reference ranges. Normal testosterone reference range is around 300 to 1000 nanograms per deciliter. The baseline value of the adults in this study was 484 nanograms per deciliter, which is the equivalent of 4.4 nanograms per milliliter as it stated in this study. Shilijit was able to increase it to 583 nanograms per deciliter, which is about a 20% increase in testosterone. We also get a similar 30% increase in free testosterone. Here is another study that confirms our findings in the first one. Testosterone up by 21%, sperm volume up by 38%, and sperm count up by 61%. That is a pretty decent amount of hormone benefits for Shilajit. Now, total testosterone is something that we want to increase, but mainly what we care about is free testosterone because that is what's able to do all of its functions throughout the body. Total testosterone isn't that great of an indicator because that testosterone could be bound to proteins like sex hormone binding globulin or albumin which prevent it from going through the functions that the body needs. Free testosterone however is able to free flow in the blood and cause the effects that we want that we know of for increased testosterone levels. Now also there are people out there that state Shilajit has benefits for muscle growth. I'm not sure we can practically say that that is the case. Judging by this study we see that Shilajit has the ability to increase the activity of certain genes involved in muscle synthesis and muscle growth. However, who cares about that? We want bigger muscles, not more active genes. It's great to first see if there is a mechanism for Shilajit to act on the muscles, but ultimately we just care about the final result, bigger muscles, heavier lifting of the weights. And this study did not find out any information like that. The study concluded that genes involved in weight loss and muscle synthesis were increased in their expression, but we don't know if anyone actually lost weight or got stronger. We need more studies to confirm that this would actually be the case. So I would say that Shilajit in this area is too early to call whether it has any benefit or not for the muscles. There are rodent studies that show that Shilajit can improve exercise performance, but we're not going to focus on these or speculate on these because we're not rodents. I'm interested in human data for my analysis, and unfortunately, we don't have any human studies on the benefit for Shilajit on muscle or exercise performance at this time. Now, there are plenty of other benefits that are shouted from the rooftops regarding Shilajit, 
But instead of going over all those studies, I'm just going to tell you that the evidence is very weak. It's either just a mechanism study or a rat study. No human studies for any actual clinical outcomes like benefits for gut health, brain cognition, stress, or inflammation. Okay, so basically the only thing you would actually take shilajit for is testosterone boosting. But let's not start chugging down this stuff by the grams because of this evidence. We need to dial down a good dose. And even this is conflicting. The dose used was different in the two testosterone studies that I referenced. The first one had 250 milligrams twice daily, and the second one had 100 milligrams twice daily. So it's unclear at this time which is the minimum effective dose. So possibly starting with the lower dose and then gradually going up while testing your blood levels for testosterone would be the best way to do things. The reason you want to start low is you want to achieve the goal you want and minimize side effects with the lowest dose possible. The higher you go, the higher the risk of side effects. And if 100 milligrams twice a day is good enough to get that 25% boost in testosterone, then why take 250 milligrams twice a day and risk a stomach upset or nausea or something else? In terms of safety and side effects, however, this study reports no changes in blood markers such as cholesterol levels or blood sugar at the 100 milligrams twice daily dose. Now, I mentioned earlier that shilajit comes leaking out of a rock. Rocks have heavy metals in them. You don't want to be consuming heavy metals voluntarily. So it's important to make sure if you are getting a shilajit supplement that it's from a high quality supplement brand and that it's purified. A good thing to always check for when it comes to supplements of any kind, not just shilajit, is a certificate of analysis to make sure you are getting exactly what you ordered and not some junk that's thrown in a bottle. Okay, so shilajit can increase testosterone by about 25% on average, which is decent. However, you have to ask yourself, what is the point of increasing my normal testosterone levels by 25%? Is that going to make any difference in my life? For example, will I feel any different if my testosterone is at 600 instead of 500 nanograms per deciliter? The answer, in my opinion, is probably no. We don't have studies that show 600 is better than 500, for example. You will feel a difference if you have a testosterone of 250 and you jump up to 500, or if you have a testosterone of 500 and you jump up to 1500, which is not healthy and sustainable, but you will feel a difference. Going from normal to slightly more normal is not going to significantly affect your life and doesn't really have any positive benefits or outcomes. However, it is still a 25% increase and as we age, our testosterone levels decrease by about 1% every year. So this is a decent way to offset that because eventually you'll be deficient or lower than normal as you age. So taking shilajit and increasing it by a small amount is better than losing a tiny amount every single year. Of all the supplements out there, I would say that shilajit, tonkat ali, and minerals like zinc, magnesium, and boron have the best efficacy when it comes to increasing testosterone naturally. Small increase for the most part, but a good option for anyone trying to maintain healthy testosterone levels as they age. You should always focus on exercise, sleep, and diet first, and once those things are dialed in as good as you can get it, you can then turn to supplements, and if that doesn't work, then maybe it's time to try out testosterone replacement therapy under the supervision of a doctor. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.